Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at Fibonacci sequences and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to tackle questions like the ones that you can see on the screen. These types of Fibonacci sequences will involve a little bit of algebra which will also involve a little bit of um, knowledge of solving equations as well. So I'm going to link all the videos in the description that you might need in order to tackle these questions but hopefully you'll be able to have a go at pretty much most of these as we go along. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so as you already know, we're going to be having a look at Fibonacci sequences. Now, if you don't already know, then obviously we need to know what a Fibonacci sequence actually is. Now, the Fibonacci sequence itself is one particular type of sequence, and it starts like the one we can see on the screen. It starts with one and one. And the way that a Fibonacci sequence works is that in order to find the next term in the sequence, we add together the two before it. Okay, so to find the next term, or in this case the third term, we're going to add together 1 and 1. So obviously nice and easy there, if we do 1 plus 1 we get the answer 2. And there we go, let's see if we can just write that again. Okay, so 2. Now, we've got the third term in the sequence, which is 2, but in order to find the next term in the sequence, we're going to look at the previous two terms. So now it's changed, and our previous two terms now are going to be 1 and 2. So in order to find the fourth term, we're going to add those two together, so 1 plus 2 is 3, and we just continue going like this, and that forms what we call the Fibonacci sequence. So if we carry on, 2 plus 3 would give us 5, 5 plus 3 would give us 8, and 8 plus 5 would give us 13. And we could carry on going for however, however long we wanted. The sequence would never end. But this is called the Fibonacci sequence. And what we're going to have a look at is Fibonacci type sequences or Fibonacci style sequences where we follow this exact same process, but perhaps we start with different numbers at the beginning. So rather than having one and one at the beginning, we'll just have something else there. But we'll follow this same process of adding together the two terms before it in order to then find that next term. So we're going to have a look at a Fibonacci style sequence, so let's have a look at that one. Okay, so here we have a Fibonacci style sequence. And this is relatively similar to our last one, because in our last one we actually had 3 and 5 appear next to each other. So although this isn't the Fibonacci sequence, it's very similar, and we are going to start it with 3 and 5, which is why it's a Fibonacci style sequence. So we're going to go through these relatively quickly. So 3 plus 5 would give us 8 for our third term in the sequence, and then we can carry on, so 5 and 8 would give us 13, and then 8 plus 13 would give us 21. And it's only asked us to find the next three terms, so we'd stop there, and that would be the next three terms in our sequence. We're going to have a look at one more quick question with something ever so slightly different before you have a go, so let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so this one's ever so slightly different. Hopefully you can spot it starts with a negative number. That's not really going to change anything. We just need to be a little bit careful with our negatives. So it says find the next three terms in this Fibonacci style sequence. So we'll just follow that same process. So just being careful here because negative 4 and 5, when we add those together, that's only going to give us the answer 1. So a little bit different there because our next number in the sequence actually goes down. And this is the only scenario where that could happen, and that is when we start to involve negative numbers within our Fibonacci sequence. So from here, nice and easy again, we've got 5 plus 1, is gives us, which gives us 6, and then 1 plus 6, which gives us 7. So after that first term, or the third term that we found there, it keeps on going up again. So it's pretty much the same as the rest of them, but just being careful there, and just taking note of whether it does start with a negative number like this one, because that can happen as well when we're looking at these Fibonacci style sequences. So there we go. Right, let's have a look at some questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's three questions here for you to have a go at, very similar to the ones we just looked at, where you are going to find the next three terms in the sequence. So pause the video there, have a go at these three, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so we're going to go over the answers for these relatively quickly. So 3 plus 7 would give you 10, 7 plus 10 would give you 17, and then 10 plus 17 would give you 27. So that's your first one. You've got negative 1 add 5, which gives you 4. You've got 5 plus 4, which is going to give you 9. And then 4 plus 9, which gives you 13. And then for the last one here, negative 3 add 6 gives you positive 3. That's just not working at all. There we go. 
negative three. Add six is positive three. Six plus three gives us the answer nine. And then three plus nine gives us the answer 12. So there's the answer to all those questions. Right, now we're going to have a look at something where we involve a little bit of algebra. So let's have a look at that now. OK, so this question here says find the next three terms in this Fibonacci style sequence. And as you can see, rather than numbers being our sequence, we have some expressions. So we have A and A plus B. So this is going to involve a little bit of you knowing about collecting like terms. And as I said at the start, I will include any of these videos just in case you haven't actually met some of these topics yet. But for this one here, we are going to involve some algebra. So if we have a look at the first two terms, we have A and A plus B. Now, if we were to write that down as a sum, just in case you prefer to look at it like this, although I won't always do this, we would have A plus and then the A plus B. So we're going to collect these like terms. So we've got an A and we have another A. So in total, that gives us 2A for our third term. And we've got that B. So our third term, which isn't really going to fit in that little gap there, so we're going to write it down here, that would give us 2A plus B. There we go, and that would be our third term in the sequence. And now we just need to look at those previous two terms again. So we have the a plus b, and we have the 2a plus b. So in total there we have three a's. So we're going to write for our next term here. We've got three a's. There we go. And now we've got the plus b and the plus b to, get to add together, and that would give us in total two b's. So we have 3a plus 2b. Now following that same process again, we we're going to look at those previous two terms. This time that's going to be 2a plus b and the 3a plus 2b. And again, just adding those a's together to start with. So if we look at those, we've got 2a and we've got 3a. And in total there, that gives us 5a. And then looking at the others, let's have a look. We've got 1b and we've got 2b. So adding those together there, that would give us plus 3b. And that would be our fifth term in the sequence. Okay, so we're just collecting like terms and treating this just like every other Fibonacci sequence, except we've got these algebraic expressions to deal with. Okay, let's have a look at one more. Okay, so last question before you have a go. Exactly the same as the last look, but we've just got some different expressions here. And the way that you can go about this look is you can highlight the A's or highlight the B's. It works quite nicely for me because I can rub them out. But obviously you just want to have a look at those terms and just collect the A's and then collect the B's. So if we look at the first two there, we've got a 2a and a 1a. So that's going to be three a's in total. And then we've got a 1b and a 3b. So adding those together would give us 4b's. So 3a plus 4b. Then looking at the 3a plus 4b with the previous one. So let's just write this in there. 3a plus 1a would give us 4a. And then 3b plus 4b would give us 7b. And then for our final term, looking at these two, so we'll highlight these ones again, just for the last one, we've got 3a and 4a, which in total gives us 7a. And then for the b's, we have 4b and 7b. And if we add those together, 4 plus 7 is 11, so we have plus 11b. And that finishes off that question. Right, okay, hopefully that seems okay. Got two questions for you to have a go at, so let's have a look at those. OK, so here's two questions for you to have a go at. So find the next three terms in both of these sequences. Pause the video there. We'll go over the answers in a sec. OK, so for the first one. So we have for the third term there, we're going to have a plus 3b. Then adding together the previous two, we're going to have 2a plus 5b. And then adding together the previous two, we should have 3a plus 8b. On to the second question for the next term, or the third one, the first one we're going to write down though, we have 3a plus 5b. Previous two now, 5a plus 8b. And then for the final term, we have 8a plus 13b. There we go, so hopefully you're fine with those. And now we're going to have a look at our final questions, where we are involving a little bit more algebra than what we've seen in these ones. So let's have a look at those now. OK, so this question here, you'll already notice something different. For starters, we're missing terms in the middle. And secondly, we haven't actually got any algebra involved. And I've said there's going to be some algebra involved in this. So we're going to have a look at how do we apply algebra to this question and why we might need to. So it says here, find the fifth term in this Fibonacci style sequence. Obviously, the fifth term here is the one at the end. 
but we're missing the second and the third term. So how are we gonna find out what that second term was so that we can figure out what the term before 13 was? And this would be okay for us to do if we had a term prior to 13. Like if we imagine, and this may not be correct, but if, let's say, seven was here, we would know that seven and 13 obviously added together to make the fifth. So we wouldn't be asked for the fifth one, but we could perhaps work backwards to try and get to the three. Now, unfortunately, we're not given that. So we're gonna to have to think about applying a little bit of algebra. So we don't know what that second term is. So let's just throw the letter X in there. So let's just say, okay, well, that is a number. Let's call it X for the moment. Now, in order to get the next number in the sequence or the third term, we would have to get add together three and X, or in other words, X plus three. So this term here, we could say as an expression is X plus three. Again, you could write that as three plus X. I just prefer to write it as X plus three. Now, how does that actually help us? How does it help us get the fifth term? Because at the moment, we've just got some algebra. Well, we know, and if I highlight these, that x and the x plus 3 have to add together to make 13. And if we know that information, that means that we can write an equation. So we're already starting to actually form and solve an equation here. So we're involving a little bit of an additional topic on top of what we've already looked at, and that is solving equations. Okay, so we have x and x plus three, and we can add those two together to make 13. So if we write that down, we've got the x and the other x, which we know we can write as two x, and we're gonna add three, and in total that equals 13. So we have formed our equation. Now we need to obviously solve this. Again, if you're not too sure on solving equations, I'll link that below in the description. But in order to solve this, we need to take away the three. So taking away the three would leave us with two x equals 10, and then we can solve that by dividing by two, and we get the answer x equals five. So we've got an answer, x equals five. How do we relate that back to the sequence? Well, we already know the second term there is what we called x. So our first term was three, our second term was x. And so now we know x equals five, we can just write five. Our third term was x plus three. Obviously what we could do is we could just do three plus five and add that together, but we already know x plus three, so that is five plus three anyway. So that's gonna add up to make eight. And then just double check that, does five and eight make that fourth term? And it does, yes, it makes 13. So we've got our fourth term. And now we can finish this off by doing eight and 13, and that's gonna add together to make our fifth term. Eight and plus, plus 13 is 21. So our fifth term there is going to be 21. We can write that down if we had to write it on an answer line or something like that. But our final answer for this question is 21. We'll have a look at one more, just a slightly little bit longer than this, but following a very similar process. Okay, so this question says find the sixth term of this Fibonacci style sequence. So pretty much the same as the last one, but we've got three missing terms in the middle. So we're going to have three expressions to figure out there and add together rather than three. So we know um, the first term is two. So again, we can call the second term X. And let's do that, I'll write this down here instead this time. So X is our second term. So to get the next term, we need to add those two together. So again, you could write two plus X. I'm gonna write X plus two, just keeping those X's first. There we go. And then again, we need to add together these two terms, the X and the X plus two, in order to get our third uh, one that we're gonna write down, which is actually the fourth term. So adding those together, we've got two X's. So 2x plus 2 and then that leads us on to our 19 and again we're going to try and find that sequence that uh, term in the sequence just afterwards so we need to add 3 together this time or do we because in order to get 19 we don't actually add those 3 together we just add the x plus 2 and the 2x plus 2 so just being very careful with that so they're the two that we need to add together in order to get the 19 so if we add those two together, 2x and x makes 3x, and we have the plus two and the plus two, so in total that's plus four. So 3x plus four is what's gonna to add together to make 19. And now we just need to solve that. So taking away four from both sides would leave us with 3x is equal to 15, and then we can divide that by three, and x is equal to five. There we go, it doesn't always equal five, but there we go, in this case it does. So moving this onto the actual sequence that we need to write down, we can actually start to put the numbers in. So after the two would be five, 
and then you can either substitute that into the algebraic expressions that we've got highlighted there, or we could just follow the normal rules of a Fibonacci st style sequence. So 2 plus 5 would give us 7, 5 plus 7 gives us 12, quick check, 7 and 12 makes 19, yep, so we know we've done that correctly, and now we can do 12 and 19, which gives us the answer 31 for that sixth term in this sequence. Okay, so there we go. These are obviously the hardest ones we've looked at. So a couple of questions on this for you to have a go at, and then we're done. So let's have a look at those now. Okay, here we go. So here are your last two questions. Again, finding the fifth term and finding the sixth term in these two sequences, and not forgetting, obviously, we need to write the algebraic expressions, form and solve that equation, and then substitute it all back in to find that term that we're looking for. So pause the video there, have a go at these two, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so finding the fifth term to start with. So after the two, we can write x. After the x, we can put x plus 2. And then we have the 10, and then the term that we're going to look for. So if we add those two together, the, the ones before the 10, we've got 2x plus 2 is equal to 10. Taking away the 2, we've got 2x equals 8. And then we can solve that x equals 4. And then we can start writing those numbers into our sequence. So after the 2 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6. Quick check, 4 plus 6 equals 10. Perfect, so 6 plus 10 equals 16. And there is our fifth term in the sequence. On to the very last one, we've got negative 1. And then we can say x. x minus 1, being careful with those two. And then 2x minus 1 and then we have 22. So something a little bit different in there, the fact that it started with negative one. So let's see how this has gone for you. So we're gonna to add together these two this time. So we're gonna have a negative involved in this one, so you just gotta be careful. If we add those together, we have three x minus two, and that is equal to 22, that term after them. So solving this, we need to add two this time. So three x equals 24. And then dividing by 3, x is equal to 8. And then we can go ahead and put that into its position. So after the negative 1, we had the value x. So that would be 8. After the 8, if we add them together, we get 7. Then we get 15. 7 and 15 add together to make 22, so that's perfect. And then after the 22, we'd need to do 15 plus the 22 which would give us 37 as our final term. So negative one and eight makes seven. Eight and seven makes 15. Seven and 15 make 22 and, twin and 15 and 22 makes 37. So always just go back and quickly check to make sure that that is correct and it definitely works, which in this case it does. So there we go, that is um, all of our questions done. Hopefully you found those ones okay. If that was useful, if it was helpful, please do like the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this channel with your friends. There we go, I'll see you on the next one.